There is so much to think about owning your own business, whether it's a recording studio or not. Today I have Brendan on, who's been on the channel before. He put out studio documents, rules, contracts that help a lot of you guys operate your businesses in more of a controlled, legal way. I use those contracts a lot. One of the things I've been negating in my career for a long time is, is taking points and only because of the perceived headache of the whole thing. It's conversations and enforceability that can get a little uncomfortable at times, if I'm being completely honest. Brendan put together another set of documents, split sheets that we can use in the studio that just makes life that much easier for us. And I have him on the channel today to talk about that. And how do we protect ourselves? How do we protect our clients? Because it's not just about what we take, but it's also what we can give. And a lot of times that's the form of security and knowledge and early communication that keeps a client informed and keeps them coming back. Real quick, I need to ask a favor. There is no sponsor for this video. If you feel like these videos help you in any manner, please hit the subscribe button. About 77% of people watching are not subscribed, and I really would love to get that number as low as possible. So if you do find these helpful, it costs you nothing, please hit the subscribe button. It helps these videos get out to more people, and it helps me do bigger and better videos. So without further ado, let's get to Brendan. I was digging through my, uh, digging through my drawer to like, put a t-shirt on today. And I thought this was maybe one of the most appropriate shirts because we went to the show together. I had the breather? Did we go to I see I had Yeah. That was when we went up to the House of Blues in Chicago. Who else was it? There was Because we saw August Burns Red yeah. and Texas in July. Yeah. And I don't remember who else was there. Um, but like the top three bands were I had the breather, Texas in July, ABR. And I ended up losing my contact in the pit, and like, it was a wild, wild shit. Gosh, that's been forever ago. I just remember when the mosh pit got going, that whole floor would like bounce. Bounced, <laughs> yes, it was like a giant trampoline. <laughs> and we went to the second floor and watched the rest of the show from there. So, had you on once before, we were talking about studio documents, which are super helpful for me. And you messaged with some new stuff dealing a lot with, frankly, things that are difficult to deal with in the studio from a lot of different perspectives. So yeah, quick rundown. What do you got? Why is it important? Go okay, so first of all, uh, I am an attorney, but it's important for me to say up front that I am no one else's attorney. Um, uh, none of this is legal advice. Please don't take it as such. Um, all these disclaimers actually do have an impact on my ability to create uh, these documents, so I have to disclaim it. I know it's boring and lame, but I'm not your lawyer. If you're concerned about any of these issues, you should probably go find your own lawyer and you can visit my website uh, on ways to contact me as your lawyer, but someone local to you will have good information on this as well. Um, so realistically, like when I was talking with other folks who were interested in buying the documents or who had uh, a studio that they wanted to customize this stuff for, we, we discovered that the documents themselves that existed prior to this new set were really good at talking to producers about bringing money in from artists to come in and record, but they didn't really address what happens for artists or producers who have credit. It didn't address what happens to money that comes in from sales, right? The royalty side of things and how do we uh, address splits and how do we address songwriting credit? What does the credit say? Um, cassettes are coming back into vogue. Like, what are we going to put in the little paper insert in the cassette uh, case? All of that stuff that, like, once it starts happening becomes much more challenging to deal with because you now have hopefully a pile of money sitting around that you have to divide up uh, according to some new thing that you discuss with your bandmates or, or your producer or whoever. Um, that stuff is all way easier to address in advance, but I didn't have a good way to do that with documents. So I worked with a, a handful of people here and there and put together this suite of documents that addresses um, splits if you're getting an advance, splits uh, for after the fact, and then also uh, player points if you've hired players and maybe they have agreed not to take as big of an upfront payment or be paid for the session and they're going to get points later. And the same thing for producers, right? So if you 
come into the studio with your ideas maybe sort of half formed and as part of the process you decide you're going to give your producer points on those tracks or maybe on the record um, you can do that with this set of documents and I didn't really have anything like that before so something that's easy to use from all angles um, that's that's kind of what I'm I'm shooting for here this in particular is super helpful because as a producer, what maybe even before we get into this, we should talk about why is this important? Why take points on something? Why get this stuff out of the way early? Um, can I give like my super stupid non-legal explanation of what I think points? I love it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So here's my explanation, and then we'll get it from somebody who knows what they're talking about. So from my perspective, points are something that I haven't dealt with in the studio. And it's only because it's been so difficult and so hard to organize and frankly, hard to educate the artist on how to control the back end. Yeah. Um, so I know it's money that I've left on the table. So points are basically a percentage of sales of something involved in a project that you're working on. So if you were to take like a standard producer point, which at one point is like anywhere between five and 9%, depending on the project you're working for, if they're really, really big, you may get one, two, 3% of something. And it also depends on the amount of work that you're putting into it. So that means basically anything that's coming from that project, physical sales, mostly digital streaming for the stuff that I'm working with, but you get a percentage of that sale. That's rightfully yours. You deserve it. You creatively put in to that. And there's a whole lot of steps to go through to make sure that an artist actually, one, credits you with that, two, puts it on the correct platforms so that you do get paid. So it's been a headache and for the longest time, I just haven't dealt with it because I didn't have contracts for it. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah, it's, um, you've got the, the definition exactly right. It's a percentage point, right? right? So when we say points or I say percentage, it's all the same thing. It, it all kind of goes together. Um, and I, I think of it in very much the same way. Like if I am providing my standard set of services and I'm not contributing to the songwriting or the creative direction, maybe I'm more of an, a strict engineer on the track, then I probably don't get points. But if I'm in, if I'm contributing to the songwriting process and I'm giving creative input and I'm I'm changing the direction of the song, then I probably should have at least some amount of songwriting credit, which equals points. So it's important to note that the documents don't actually set up any of the back end. It doesn't do any of that. But what it does do is it establishes the relationship on paper. And if the artist doesn't do what they're supposed to do according to that piece of paper, then you have the document to come back and say, hey, what the hell? I was supposed to get five points on this track. You've sold 100 million copies of it. Where is my money? Where are my points? Where's the, the amount that I was supposed to get that we agreed on prior to you experiencing all of this success? Where is my cut that we agreed on? And really that's like, that's the thrust of these documents. It gives you something to say, we have an agreement and I'm owed this. And, and you and I had a conversation about physical sales kind of going away and I alluded to the cassette thing earlier. And that's true. You know, physical sales aren't maybe as prevalent as they used to be. Vinyl is making a huge comeback. Cassettes are starting to, to really be much more popular than I ever thought they would be. Um, but physical sales are not gone. Um, I have in my, my own YouTube uh, queue a video from Tank the Tech on um, a recent merch split for an arena band. And I'm sure the numbers are going to be like insane because that's where most touring bands make their money. And if you've contributed to that and you have gotten points on physical sales, then you're entitled to a cut of that. Now, whether you decide to waive that later or you work out some alternative arrangement with the artist where maybe they pay you $5,000 in advance and you agree to waive your points on the physical side, that's entirely up to you. And we can have a, a, a much deeper conversation about that but the goal of these documents was to give you the points that you're entitled to across all of the revenue streams that a songwriter should have access to now I'm not going to give you access to t-shirts and uh, hoodies and keychains and that kind of stuff because you don't really have input on that to the extent you do you should look to get that cut but for most um, 
for most people, you're really talking about the music. So you're talking about digital streams, you're talking about, um, you know, digital album purchases, physical record sales, maybe mechanical licensing, um, all of the uses of the song should be paid according to the splits. And if you have points on that split, you should get a, a cut of it. It's one of those things that seems really, really small. And this is me reflecting back on a lot of my career that I've worked with people who have taken points and had that organization and done that extra step. And they have like a huge body of work that they can point to and that they're collecting royalties on. And for the longest time, I didn't do that just because I didn't want to deal with it. And that was probably a mistake. So this is where something like this and having documents like this and enforceable things like this. And it's not about trapping somebody into giving you money. It's about being organized right up at the front. And this is doing a lot of the legwork for you. And these documents, although yeah, it's, it's spending a little bit of money, but it's knowing that you're covered so that you can get paid for a very, very long time. Especially if you believe in the work that you're doing. It's kind of like an investment in yourself. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the the popular thing to do right now is to create multiple revenue streams for yourself. So you see people setting up e-commerce sites and you know doing YouTube channels, but they're really not actually making altogether that much content. And the result is what they're calling mailbox money, right? Checks are just arriving and they're not necessarily huge checks, but they arrive every month without fail, without you having to do any additional work. And that's exactly what these points give you. If you've built a body of work over 10, 15, 20 years, and you're not collecting some even minute amount on each one of those projects, you're leaving money on the table. And if you get 15 checks for 20 bucks a piece every month, that's serious money at the end of the year. Um, and if you've left that out there, then you're doing a disservice to yourself. And to your point that we're not trying to trap people, you're absolutely right. What we're trying to do here is just memorialize the understanding that we have at the beginning of the project, not come after somebody for something that we are not already owed or that we didn't agree on. Um, I would not ask you. Uh, I would ask you not to use these documents to just try and take a greedy share of an artist's work. If you're a producer and you're doing, you know, five to ten percent of the work, you should really keep your cut to five to ten percent and not be seeking this like twenty, thirty, forty percent cut that, frankly, you're not entitled to and would be wrong for you to go after. I want you to use these responsibly. And for the people who kind of work as I have worked in the past on like a work for hire basis. Yes, it's a little more <clears throat> dry, but the thing I will say, when you are bought into a project on the, on the portion of owning a piece of that project, you work hard to earn it. And I, I think yeah. that's the right way to think about it. Not just that, hey, I'm owed 5%, regardless of what I'm doing. But if by the end of this project, like I'm gonna work my butt off to know that I put my 5% in, regardless of the other stuff that was all work for hire. And I think that's another point we can talk about with this because this also, this does work in conjunction with like, hey, I'm getting paid to do studio work as well as putting in this creative thing and I deserve those points. But there's also the ability that these documents could give you, or correct me if I'm wrong here, because these are dealing with like producer, engineer, players, it kind of frees you up to take on projects as like a passion project. So if you just yeah. wanted to take points for something, you could. Like if you have the freedom as an engineer, producer, or a player to not be paid right now, but you still want to put all this work in and you still want a guarantee of what I'm going to be paid, like there's flexibility in these documents to do that. Yeah, that's exactly right. And if if you're using both sets of documents together, the recording services agreement and this uh, split suite, basically, um, you can do both and you can kind of flex back and forth and say, you know, for this project, I'm going to take it on an all cash basis and I'm not going to get any points. And I'm OK with that because this is really just I'm a hired gun. Um, and you can go anywhere in between then of zero dollars and all points. Maybe you agree like a point in advance for every you know, $500 of studio time or of uh, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a point for every $500 I take off of your total invoice. And maybe that's I'm taking five points on a $5,000 project and you're going to pay me 25 bucks so I can keep the doors open. Or maybe it's I'm taking $500 on a $5,000 project and then I'm going to take uh, nine points or you know, whatever it looks like for you, whatever makes sense. And you can kind of go on a project by project basis then and say, I really believe a lot in this project, so I'm going to totally forego my cut of this and I'm going to take all points. And artist, let's have a conversation about what that looks like, what that means, how I look at that when I come in to open up my studio and share my space with you, when all I'm going to get is future revenue. I'm not getting revenue today. And what does that mean for hiring players? Am I responsible for hiring the players? Are you, the artist, going to be responsible for hiring the players? Are you going to pay them cash? Can we get better players as a result because I can pay them more? Or are they going to be on an all points basis too and that's going to affect how much you ask for in terms of your points if you're going to forego any cash you might consider taking a larger uh, number of points because you really need this to pay off in the long run to have been worth the time you invested at the front end and it might work the exact opposite way as well you might have much fewer points where you get a larger sum of cash up front um and the true word it, the same is true for the players mm-hmm. now if somebody wants to check these out where can they go brendanmacy.com head up to the shop link in the top right and uh, you'll see the recording services agreement this brand new point suite Uh, the whole package is 200 bucks and i think unfortunately uh, the discount for recording studio loser channel references for the recording services agreement is going to expire as well we've had a really long run with that coupon code and a lot of people have used it it has um, but I, i think it's time and I really feel like these documents are worth the money that you're going to spend on them. If you went to a local attorney, most likely what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put down uh, what's called a retainer. And usually those start at about $5,000. And then your lawyer kind of works against that retainer until you need to re-up it. So to spend 200 bucks on a suite of documents that are useful for most people. They are not going to be useful for all people. I'm not telling you that this is going to be a a be-all, end-all solution right out of the box. You might want to take a look at it and uh, make some adjustments. And that's true for both sets of documents. But I give you a document within there to kind of tell you how you might think about doing that and what you might want to change. Um, You're going to get a set of documents that works in most cases for you. And if you bought both of them, you're like less than 10% of what you would put down as a retainer for a local attorney. So again, we're not forming an attorney-client relationship here, but these documents are kind of like a legal zoom type thing where you can download them adjust them in ways that you know i give you some ways to think about but if you're really concerned about making sure they work for you hire a lawyer make sure they work for you make sure you understand them um because i don't want you to get into trouble using something you don't totally understand or that doesn't actually work for your specific circumstance you can contact me through my website i'm happy to help out once we do form that relationship um and kind of see how we can work together